A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, the disciples said to Jesus, Where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went into the city and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. As I was preparing for this homily, I came across an old Catholic poem entitled The Beautiful Hands of a Priest. I think every single priest has been given this poem on a prayer card for their ordination day or perhaps on some anniversary of their ordination. You have probably heard it yourselves. It talks about how beautiful are the hands of a priest who consecrates the bread and the wine as Christ did. How beautiful are the hands of a priest when they anoint the sick, when they are raised in blessing, when they offer forgiveness and reconciliation. It is a very inspiring poem. And as I read it over, I thought about my life as a priest and about all those people that my hands have ministered to. I also remembered the hands of many parishioners who had ministered to me and how together we form the body of Christ. On this day in which we celebrate Christ's body and blood, I invite you to think not only about the beautiful hands of the priests that you have known, but also how beautiful are the hands of all of those people who make up this church of ours. How beautiful are the hands of children who come to worship with us. We sometimes forget that when they are crying or banging the kneelers or kicking the back of the pews. They can disturb our private prayer. They interrupt the homily and we make angry faces at their parents until they take them out of the church. But these children are our future. They bring life and vitality to the church. And they remind us that worship is not about sitting stiff and still, lost in our own separate world, isolated from all those around us. Children remind us that Sunday worship is about making a joyful sound unto the Lord. We must welcome these little ones. They bring life and hope to the body of Christ. How beautiful are the hands of a young couple on their wedding day as they make God a part of the promises that they share with each other and as they begin to live as one within the body of Christ. How beautiful are the hands of a husband and a wife who have weathered the storms and the trials of married life. They hold on to their commitment to each other, even when it would be easier to just give up. They sacrifice their own life to give life to their spouses. Especially in times of trial or grave illness, never letting go of the other's hands, 
even in the darkness of the night. Married people bring commitment, fidelity, and the promise of fulfillment to the body of Christ. How beautiful are the hands of the elderly when praying to Christ, who has walked with them all of their lives. They have remained faithful even when they have lost the spouse they loved, even as they lose the strength of their mind and their body. They rely on his body, the body of Christ, to help them remain strong until they can at last be with Christ. The witness of the elderly brings courage and strength to the body of Christ. How beautiful are the hands of all God's people, young, old, single, married, father or mother. For together our hands form the church. To the outside world, we may appear as nothing more than a collection of strangers, hypocrites and sinners. But even though we may not know each other's names, even though things have been done in the name of religion that have hurt rather than healed, even though we may have lost our way and are too ashamed to ask for help, when we gather together to worship and when we stand in line with our hands out reaching for the blessed sacrament, we are no longer strangers. We become one body, one church, joined in communion with God by the body and the blood of Christ. Somehow Christ has found us, but through him we can find each other. Knowing that we are one in this body of Christ can bring us great joy because we know that when we gather here on any given Sunday, we can be who we are without any pretenses. Here in his presence and in the presence of his people, we don't have to hide our weaknesses, our faults, or our sinfulness. Here we can feel the joy of being forgiven when before we were ashamed and afraid. Here we can find ourselves loved when we thought we were lost and alone. How beautiful are the hands of those who reach out in love to enemies and friends alike. If you allow the body and the blood of Jesus to enter into your heart and fill you with joy, then you will have nothing left in you to hate with or to be afraid about or to feel guilty of. Over time, as you eat his body and drink his blood, your whole life changes and it is pointed in the right direction. You know that Christ will help you find your way, even in the midst of suffering, even when sinfulness and shame cloud your eyes with tears. How beautiful are the hands of Jesus who gave us this Eucharist that we share, and who reminds us that despite the absurdity which surrounds us, the world is still filled with mystery and mercy, with wonder, joy, and fulfillment. The body and blood of Jesus poured out freely and willingly on Calvary still pours forth freely from this altar. And when we partake of it, we are reminded that the divine image in which we are made, though often distorted, cannot be destroyed. And we gain the hope that in the end, the likeness of God in which we were made will win out over sin and division. The Eucharist binds us together in communion with Christ and with each other. It strengthens our faith so that we can offer ourselves as one to God, who alone can satisfy our hunger and change our sadness to joy. And so, as the beautiful hands of the priest consecrate this bread and wine, and as you cradle the body of Christ in your hands or on your tongue, 
May God fill you with his grace so that you will see just how beautiful it is to share the wonder of what God has given us. May we all come to see just how beautiful it is to be the body of Christ.